Hi everybody, welcome along to the fifth programme in this year's series for the British Racing and Sports Car Club Fiesta Junior Championship from Donington Park. These drivers, 14 to 17 years of age and very much the future of British motorsport. Let's take a look at the grid for today's race. Jerry Nicosia on pole with Michael Higgs alongside. Row two, Tom Grundy and Sam Watkins. Then Aaron Thompson and Nathan Edwards. Rob Cox, seventh with Jess King. And newcomer, a warm welcome to Alex Tate in ninth. Jerry Nicosia taking pole position for the first time this year, the first man to depose Rob Cox, the championship leader. And Nicosia sits left of shot to his, or to our right of him. We've got Michael Higgs, the blue car with the yellow top. As you can see, wipers on, wet conditions, but the track is drying and many of them have gone out on treaded tyres, but Nico Sia makes no mistakes at all at the start and gets away. Tom Grundy looking up the inside of Michael Hicks to take second into Redgate, and he's through the 43 car. Goes through into second place. Higgs is third. Aaron Thompson's coming up into fourth on the inside of Sam Watkins. Thompson qualified fifth, so he's already made a pass as they come down through the Craner curves for the first time. And Jerry Nicosia, you could see from the start absolutely no way he was going to surrender that hard-earned pole position off the start. And he's down at the old hairpin in lead position. From his point of view, he will want to take a lights-to-flag victory. We, of course, as viewers, hoping that it's going to be some challenging to that, but we'll wait and see how it all goes. As they come up to McLean's for the first time, Tom Grundy, who took the win at Cadwell Park, his first win, is chasing hard now of course Jerry Nicosia won the race at Cadwell but had a had that bizarre problem with the breakage of the exhaust mounting which meant the car failed its ride height absolutely no sleight of hand on on the part of the team and I think we made that clear in our coverage from Cadwell but there is an appeal over that and it's due to be heard this week so we'll wait and see how that pans out but at the moment Nicosia leads from Tom Grundy in second place Michael Higgs third then Aaron Thompson coming out of the S's and Nico is building up a good lead. Grundy second and across the line. So we go back, you can see Alex Tate just at the back of the field at the moment. Jess King, meanwhile, is getting stuck in and having a look to pass Nathan Edwards for seventh position. Race leaders again down through the craners. The championship, championship leader, Rob Cox, is... Uh, well down the order, qualifying in seventh place. Remember, he's been on pole for the previous four events, so clearly something amiss with the car. Rob's car, I think if you look back at the result sheets, the progressive result sheets over the course of the last couple of meetings, it's, it's since that shunter angle seat that he had, rounds five and six, that the problems seem to have manifested themselves. But he is out here and gunning and he's going to try and pick up whatever points that he can. Meanwhile, we look at Aaron Thompson chasing Michael Higgs, and Thompson looks down the inside at Coppice to take third. There was a, a more than a gap there, and Thompson places the car. This is all going to be about the run down into the S's now, and Thompson surely is going to take the place because he's got the racing line. Yeah, there he goes, under braking. Thompson up into third place. Michael Higgs fourth. Then it's Sam Watkins in red, and a bit of a gap back. Slight gap back to Rob Cox, who's got his lights ablaze, the white car with the, the blue stripes on the top. And then if you look right in the distance, an absolutely cracking battle going on between uh, Nathan Edwards and Jessica King with Alex Tate, the newcomer, keeping pace with those. It's absolutely superb. <coughs> Aaron Thompson now then has got to try and pull away from Michael Higgs. Higgs, of course, race winner in race two at Snetterton. Now, all of, his, all of his finishes so far, Michael Hicks, have been on the podium. So he's going to be a little bit disgruntled to find himself away and coming under pressure from Sam Watkins. 
Samu started the season with four fifth places, then had a seventh at DNF at Anglesey, sixth place in the opening event at Cadwell Park, and he's chasing hard. So all of these drivers getting more competitive as the season goes on. There's a lot of tutelage available for these drivers, including former Clio champion Phil Glue. I can't think of a better guy to be coaching these youngsters, apart from maybe. Of course, Chris Hodgetts, who coaches the race leader, the twice British touring car champion, coaching Jerry Nikos here. But loads of advice for all the drivers. As we look at this battle that I mentioned now, between Nathan Edwards and Jessica King, coming out of the S's, down the weak cross straight. King goes to the right of shot. That's the outside line on the circuit, so she'll be hoping to have got the job done by the time she gets to Redgate. Looks like she got a better run. Nose in front momentarily, but Edwards holds on to the inside line and holds on to position as well. So Jessica King goes back out to the outside of the circuit to gain a little bit more of a sweep through Hollywood and down into the Craner curves. So up into McLean's comes this battle. And I'll tell you what, Jess is absolutely relentless here and she's really piling the pressure on. Looks to the inside line. Nathan has to go a little bit defensive. So the Tunbridge Wells man is going wide here and Jessica King looks like she might be able to get up the inside. Second part of Coppice onto the Dunlop straight and Jessica King goes through. That was a cracking move. The Leicestershire driver, this is her home circuit, has gone through and taken seventh place. <coughs> so Sam Watkins, Michael Higgs. Well, Sam, Sam Watkins has now got ahead of Michael Higgs to take fourth place. So Higgs in blue is fifth. Rob Cox in sixth position, still battling his his car here Cox of course having won the first three races of the year two fastest laps took a third fastest lap in the DNF that he had at Snetterton and the team will be very very keen to try and find out what the problem is the WDE team now Wayne Easton's team have uh, Paul Rivet, another Clio champion in the mix as well, looking after things and encouraging the drivers on. And of course, Paul mentoring Charlie Liddell, the former junior champion in Clio's. Nathan Edwards back in front of Jessica King, so she's got all the work to do again. And the car behind is our newcomer to the championship, Alex Tate. He's going to be very pleased to be watching these two gunning hard. Jess looking at the, the inside line again through Coppice. It's really good, clean, fair racing from the pair of them. Nathan goes a little bit wide. And Jess points the car up the inside again. Is she going to be able to retake the pass? Hasn't quite got as, as much momentum. I think that was really down to the narrower entrance and exit into Coppice. So Nathan Edwards hangs on to position. And this is really good stuff for Alex Tate. You can learn from watching these two. And in fact, he might even be able to go for a pass. Alex, who's had experience of soloing and auto testing in cars. So he's had plenty of practice within the car itself Jess King goes to the outside line again you've got to be brave to do this here at Donington to try and make a move round the outside you very rarely see it in senior racing but Jess is having a very good go here has a great look at the outside goes back in and is still harrying Nathan Edwards for seventh place a superb battle probably the closest battle on, on the field here or in the field and we're absolutely right to stick with this scrap for the moment Alex Tate, not too far away as you can see. Tate's qualifying time on 1 minute 30.734. Let's keep our eyes on Nathan Edwards and Jessica King. Up into Schwantz. Now will Jess be able to mount a challenge at Coppice again? That was where she managed to get the, the manoeuvre completed before. And Nathan Edwards keeping it pretty wide at the moment. Jess a little bit far back at the moment and by doing the maximum racing line could optimise the speed down the straight she's coming out of the slipstream again and they're side by side along the Dunlop straight Alex Tate's coming up as well Nathan Edwards has got the inside line down into the S's should hang on to position yes he does so Jess has got it all to do again quicker exit out of the S's for Jess now she's going to get the run she's going to try the outside line again fancies her chances here on the outside line, along the straight, side by side along the Wheatcroft straight. I think she got to the line first. Can she get across in front of Nathan Edwards before they get to Redgate? Edwards keeping it very tight into the corner. Jess looking at the outside line, goes for the sweep, and she's got past. Can she hang on around the outside? Yes, she has. 
That's a brave move for adult racers, but for the junior championship, that was an incredible manoeuvre. Great clean racing and respect from the pair of them. And I might even be tempted to say move of the season, certainly move of the day from Jessica King, who moves up into seventh place ahead of Nathan Edwards. And as I say, both drivers have got to be clean to allow that. So hats off to both of them. Nathan Edwards, great driving as well. He's down to eighth. He's going to be disappointed with that, but he'll fight on to the flag. Meanwhile, here is the leader, Jerry Nicosia who has a lead of over a second from Tom Grundy. Grundy's on a flyer at the moment, though. Aaron Thompson is back in third place. There's Aaron, the blue and white car. Big gap back to fourth, which is Sam Watkins. But Nico Sia comes across the line and will take the win. There's the chequered flag. Jerry Nico Sia wins it. Tom Grundy second, but gets the fastest lap on the last lap, lap 12 of our 20-minute race. So Grundy's first fastest lap, that is going to be a major fillip for him. So Jerry Nicosia's second win, Tom Grundy second and fastest lap, then Aaron Thompson, Sam Watkins fourth from Michael Higgs, Robert Cox in sixth from Jessica King, Nathan Edwards eighth and Alex Tate in ninth. Yeah, can't really get any better than that. And, uh have to thank the team greatly, uh, also Nissa Racing, Chris Hodgetts, and they've given us a great car and I'm glad the team got one too. Well, it was a good, good race, I would have liked to have been up there next to Jerry for the whole race but I dropped back a bit, gave him a bit of space, I didn't want to come to win the race, I'm just happy with where I got. Uh, very hard. We, uh, we, all, we all went out on wets with a, with a dry track, so it was a bit of try to balance the tyre wear and attack for second. It was, it was hard. Welcome back to Donington Park for round 10 of the 2014 BRSC Fiesta Junior Championship. Pole position going to Jerry Nicosia from Tom Grundy. On the second row, Aaron Thompson and Sam Watkins, and then Michael Higgs and Robert Cox. Jessica King lines up seventh with Nathan Edwards, Alexander Tate completing the grid. Green flag from the back of the field, drier conditions here at Donington as we wait for lights out. Nico Sia front row, left of shot to his outside, Tom Grundy, who got the fastest lap in race one, the first time in his career he's done that. And they all get off the line very well indeed, but a great start from the outside of row two from Sam Watkins, who's trying to outdrag Aaron Thompson. Robert Cox behind him as well, coming to the outside, so too is Michael Higgs in the blue and yellow car. Jessica King... And Nathan Edwards will renew battle with Alex Tate. Somebody kicks up the dirt. I'm not sure who that is. We can't see. Well, it wasn't Jerry Nicosia because he appears into shot in lead position as Aaron Thompson looks to move into second, coming down through the Craner curves. Thompson second. Tom Grundy in third. Then it's Robert Cox followed by Michael Higgs. Well, cracking start again. These youngsters, just a reminder, if you've not seen these cars before, the 14 to 17-year-olds and great to have nine drivers on the grid now hoping to get into double figures before the end of the year a lot of drivers will be looking at what Aaron Thompson and Jerry Nicosia did last year coming into the chat there's Alex Tate our new man in the field the Sheffield based driver who's acquitted himself superbly for a first weekend's motor racing and going back to what I was saying about getting the field up to double figures uh, a lot of drivers are going to be looking at maybe coming in for the last two or three rounds exactly, well, not quite exactly, but almost as Thompson and Nico Sia did last year. They did half a season. They were waiting, of course, to become of age to come and race these cars. But it's a good idea to stick a toe in the water for two or three rounds at the end of one season then come in for a full season following. So Robert Cox coming under pressure for Michael Higgs. He's losing a bit of ground, the championship leader there on the third place car but I think given what's happened this weekend so far Cox is going to be reasonably happy to be up in fourth place it looks like the WDE team have found something in the car to make it a tad better and they're going to be working hard after the meeting to try and make it even better to continue for the next round but he's coming under pressure from Michael Higgs as you can see so Higgs working hard, but Cox hanging on to position at the moment. The championship leader Higgs is second in the championship on 171 on drop scores coming into this round. It's all going to change. The complexion will also change with that appeal that I mentioned in 
race number one. And if the uh, appeal by Jerry Nicosia on exclusion from Cadwell is upheld, it helps on two counts. One, the exclusion, you can't drop, have an exclusion as a drop score, so it will come back into play, but it will also be a win for him if it's upheld. But we'll wait and see, and we'll let you know at our next programme how that all pans out. Meanwhile, Nicosia building a lead. He won the first race by 1.2 seconds, and it's bigger than that at the moment over the... Second place driver Tom Grundy, who's got back into second ahead of Aaron Thompson. And they're forming a little bit of a queue here behind Rob Cox because coming up as well is Sam Watkins in red. Michael Higgs trying to go through. Well, Michael Higgs now is ahead of Rob Cox, who is working hard with that car, but clearly not performing as well as we have seen it do so earlier on in the season. Jessica King running superbly. Got clear of Nathan Edwards here. Nathan goes through shot. Then Alex Tate in the red and green car. And through on the inside of Rob Cox as well now goes Sam Watkins. So Watkins is through. And on a little bit of a charge at the moment, Sam Watkins. So And Jessica King's going to come up and have a go here at Rob Cox too. Looks at the outside line down into the chicane. Lightly clattering the kerbs on the S's is, is Cox and Jess King. Let's see what sort of a run she can get. She was a couple of car lengths back coming out of the S's. Now, does that suggest to me that it's power, perhaps, rather than handling, that's causing the problem for Rob Cox's car? They're side by side and Jess is going for that remarkable move around the outside at Redgate again. The girls' confidence is sky high at the moment and rightly so after that great drive in race number one but not quite enough momentum to get around the outside of the championship leader there. But she's all over the back of Rob Cox at the moment, down through the Craner curves. What a superb place for 14 to 17 year olds to learn their racecraft. And Rob Cox lights up the brakes on the car. He is racing hard as well. He's going to learn as much from perhaps the car underperforming as if it was on, on top notch and uh, he probably won't thank me for saying that but I think it's absolutely true Nathan Edwards trying to come up and join in the scrap as well now is Jessica King going to be able to pass Robert Cox she's certainly shown her mettle as a passer at this meeting that uh, uphill climb into Coppice and then down the Dunlop straight back towards the start finish area and Jess looking at the inside line here and the great thing about Jess King she's not a one trick pony she's passed on the outside at Redgate she's passed there at Coppice and she'll take any opportunity that comes exactly what any racing driver should do and Jess of course looking to join the ranks of some great British lady racing drivers that well we've got at the moment Susie Wolfe of course testing F1 came through the ranks of Formula Renault here in the UK Alice Powell another top driver who started off in junior car racing as well and won the BARC Formula Renault Championship uh, beating all the guys so it is possible and uh, well Jessica running real well here Rob Cox though still out front at the moment great game of cat and mouse between those two Nathan Edwards trying to get on terms two so Rob Cox probably not used to having to drive on his mirrors but you can see from the brakes that he's really having to work hard here to defend this is going to be some of the hardest earned points that he's had over the course of the season he's had three wins so far four fastest laps so this is very very character building for him and you can see the fact that he's defending so much this is uh, means that Nathan Edwards has got the bit between his teeth as well and he's closing in Alex Tate not too far away as well and this closeness on circuit means we're not getting to see Jerry Nicosia, who's pulling clear of the field and looking to join the ranks of the drivers who have done double victories in the championship over the years. Charlie Liddell, Jack Mitchell, Rob Cox, of course, who we're looking at at the moment, JJ Ross as well. So some exalted company if Jerry Nicosia can hang on out front. But Jess King losing a little bit of ground now on Rob Cox this is where she was gaining it earlier on down the straight four-way scrap and a very very good battle it is indeed with Cox at the moment in sixth position just seventh as she was in race number one so through Hollywood and down into the Craner curves again 20 minutes of racing action 
the juniors if you're thinking about coming into the championship normally the meetings are split over two days lock up again from Robert Cox and Jess will have seen that that will spur her on again to have another attack going back to the race format normally two day meeting day one qualifying and a free practice session to start with so plenty of time for the drivers to familiarise themselves with circuit and car and then race day is day two of the meeting normally which is the two 20 minute races which are usually performed on track as Jess looks at the inside line normally shared with the senior Fiesta Championship as well but here is Jerry Nicosia who again has led from start to finish the lead out to over six seconds that is an incredible lead that Jerry's got and he's going to score a double as he goes into the S's for the last time it's Tom Grundy in second place behind him and here is Jerry Nicosia coming down to take the flag there it is Two out of two at Donington Park for Nicosia. Tom Grundy takes second. He's got the fastest lap again, having done it in race number one. Tom did it on, on lap three. Two fastest laps for Grundy at this meeting. Third across the line is Aaron Thompson. Sam Watkins follows him. And then we wait for Rob Cox, who's in the background, still under massive pressure as well, as you can see, coming into shot. He's had a very, very hard race here at Donington Park with Jess King. And we wait for those cars to come out of the S's, which they do now. Rob Cox will finish fifth after the demise of Michael Higgs. Jess King in sixth place from Nathan Edwards. And there is Alex Tate coming through as well. Well, in the final result, Aaron Thompson penalised for an unfair advantage. So it's Jerry Nicosia from Tom Grundy, Sam Watkins third, then Aaron Thompson, Robert Cox in fifth from Jess King, Nathan Edwards in seventh, Alex Tate eighth, and a non-finish for Michael Higgs. Now, Jerry, I did interview you this morning and you said I said you looked very hot, but it was nothing compared to the sauna of yesterday. That, uh, presumably, it must have been a bit hotter out, but you don't look as hot this time. It was warmer, but no, still nothing compared to yesterday. <laughs> and uh, we just, you know, we've been strong all weekend and the team have been brilliant and that could be seen in the poll yesterday. Two wins here, one, two for the team and uh, just managed to get away at the start and put in a couple of qualifying laps and consistency. Uh, that looked like uh, quite a tussle going on there for, for a little while. You got yourself then into a, a nice lonely second place. Can't be complained about that though. No, I got it weird at the start. Tried to not hit Jerry. <laughs> so I took it a bit sideways, dropped into third or fourth. And then by the straight at the back, I just got past Aaron. Different story that time. You had to defend and attack then, didn't you? It was more defend, attack, and try and keep the car on a straight line. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong, but we, something, we, we must have tried something new on the setup that I wasn't aware of because I was braking normally, turning in normally, and I just had it sideways, bouncing across the grass. and So I, I just had to brake a lot earlier, be a lot more cautious on the throttle because the back just kept stepping out. And it was, a, it was a problem because I lost second because of that, going through the old hairpin sideways. Tom managed to get the run and pass me. And then keep going sideways is how I lost contact with the first two and it's how Sam managed to catch me.